see here. This is a test tube. And uh, that's some uh, oak tree bark. Watch this. Okay, this here. Bootlegger won't have to chop it up, just fit it right in the big drum. It'll work fine. Come on. Okay. Test tube full of wood bark. Now I'm going to take the test tube full of wood and take this aluminum tube that I put on there and we're going to make the smoke coming off of the wood and I'm going to take and um, the smoke comes off, I'm going to take the smoke, which is our fuel, and suck it inside uh, um, this here uh, syringe. This syringe is for uh, refilling ink cartridges for printers. Okay, there's our test tube with our little chimney on there. Set that in here. A little while smoke's going to start coming out of the end. Our biofuel. Here it comes. There's a little bit of, sm little bit of smoke coming out of there. A lot of smoke coming out of there. Yeah. Now you can see this gas here is inside the test tube and uh, I'm compressing it. See, I can compress, compress it. Whoop, and the test tube comes. Whoop, see that? It, I could compress this gas now that I made. And then we're going to put this in the freezer as another test that I, I did. So here we go. Now here, once again, is the gas inside the syringe. And here's the freezer with the gas in the freezer. Leave it sit there for a few minutes so that it freezes so we know that this is doing so we know that this is gas a gaseous substance and not a liquid or a dust or something that we're burning. Now oh, half hour later I've, I've taken this gas and put it in the freezer overnight and for days before doing the same experiment and um, now we're gonna go into the other room and and uh, show you how it works okay ladies and gentlemen now here is the gas that I produced and compressed and then put in the freezer and now I'm going to show you how it works take this little cover off here Voila, there is 
a gas that's every bit as good as propane or natural gas that I made and produced right here in my own house. There you go. A company by the name of IMCO makes converters and carburetors to run uh, cars and trucks on natural gas. And I'm sure that this fuel will work just as well in those conversion kits. So therefore you can see that you could make your own fuel and be independent of the uh, fossil fuel energy monopolies. It's not that hard. And we're going to show you a little bit more coming right up. This up ahead, ladies and gentlemen, is a slash pile waiting to be burned to serve no other purpose than to dispose of it, get rid of it, open burn in the atmosphere, just so the greediest war profiteering oil and energy monopulating, monop monopolizing people can control you and enslave you. Thousands of piles of wood are burned like this every year throughout the United States, representing tons and tons of energy and tons and tons of carbon, CO2, just going up into the atmosphere for no use. Like I said before, just the only reason for it, this is it's simple and easy to get rid of and that energy is then lost and then we buy energy by bombing other countries and killing their people and taking their fossil fuel for less than what it's worth. And, uh, the Energy Bootlegger Project, which will go on to the next step and I'll show you a little more how far I've progressed on that with no help from anybody other than my parents and a few close friends because they're all see Kyle to the energy monopoly. They could give a shit about Mother Nature or anything like that. But a small group of us and a growing group of people are realizing that we've been lied to our whole life. This is probably a couple hundred pounds to a, I'd say 500 or maybe even a thousand pounds of uh, energy that I hope to be able to chop up and put in the energy bootlegger and put it to good use making electricity and heat and fuel that I can drive my truck with someday. All right. Okay, not quite a man cave, but here's a garage. And here we go. There's a, the energy bootlegger. It's going to put that stuff to use. Hi, my name is Ken Dreesen, and I'm with Local Ideas Incorporated, nonprofit corporation at that. And um, this is what I now like to call the energy bootlegger. I originally and uh, patented, filed a patent pending, calling it the Rural Residential Energy Harvester. And what it does is you can take wood, put it in here, the door's not hinged yet, but that's where you, your uh, processed wood, your wood that will fire everything. This is the firebox will go. And then this here tube is unfinished, but that's going to have an end plate on it. And then the other end will have a door that swings open and you can put wood and plastic and certain kind of garbages in there. And then using a, a destructive distillation or it's, it's called pyrolysis sometimes, but pyrolysis usually isn't in the absence of oxygen. It's a uh, got some oxygen in it temporarily or 
what you could say. So this is a, it's, it's actually like for, in layman's terms, it would be like a pressure cooker. So like the stove or the heat is in here and then this is the pressure cooking pot or vessel. And then over here we have a steam boiler. It's a tube boiler. This is the, um, what's called the mud drum, the lower drum, and this is the steam drum up on top and these are the tubes. And the tubes act like a radiator to get the heat that's coming from the flames, from the firebox to uh, move through and absorb the heat better than if you just had one big fat kettle with no tubes. There's also a type of boiler called a fire tube boiler and then uh, there would be a bigger round vessel and tubes going into this and then the fire would go through them. But the problem with them is you would have to have such a bigger cylinder and the bigger the cylinder is you know, the bigger the boiler uh, circumference is, the more dangerous it is and the more thicker the walls would have to be in order to keep it from blowing up. So this is a relatively small one foot in diameter um, boiler. This is the main, the main tube of the boiler, the, of the steam drum, and then you have a, the water will be filled with these tubes and the fire goes over the top of it. And when it's doing all of its functions, what I will do is there's going to be a, um, gates or a metal plate or ceramic plates of some kind that's come inside here, and this will be separated, and then there'll be another, another door here that can slide open and closed. So when you're making the... Uh, using this here thing to make your biofuel that you can run in your pickup truck to go get more wood, then you open up that door in the heat, the hot is probably like 700 degrees, we only need like 500 degrees Fahrenheit to make this process work. And then the heat will come up here, and then instead of the chimney being up here at that time when I'm doing that, then it will come circulating down over this here thing, and this only needs 350, I think it's 300, actually 45 degrees, but around 350 degrees. So then this absorbs the hotter heat, then the, the heat that's getting a little cooler comes up and comes through the, um, this here system, and then the smokestack in that case will be out here. And then if you're just using it like a, this all can, it also can work as a, a conventional wood boiler. You'll have this here valve closed, and you won't be using this process, and then all the heat will come up through here, and you could have the fire just barely smoldering, and you'll run it all night, and then just to make low pressure steam or even hot water, and then that hot water in here would heat your house all night long. And uh, then, in that case, the chimney would be up here. And uh, that's, I guess, all I can tell you about it right now. You can see I made another uh, uh, movie a few months ago, and I called it uh, Persistence. And that was when I was drilling these holes in order to build this thing this far. So it's, you can see that I made quite a bit of progress on my own. And, and as usual, I throw everything I have into this pocket and I'm out of money again. But somehow I'll figure out how to get some kind of work and do some, fix somebody's car or something, get some more money to get this thing finished. Because I'm pretty darn close to it right now.